Well, hey guys, and welcome back. Today is the 11th day of Christmas. If you're watching, this is part of the 12 Days of Christmas series. If not, I look silly because this is part of the 12 Days of Christmas series. So let's dive in right into the topic today. We're going to talk about the attitudes of science. Now, usually I do not pair, pair a presentation for you, but in this case I did just to make sure you can write down all six. <music> All right, guys, so like I said, let's look at the six attitudes of science. The first one is determinism. So we believe as behavior analysts that the world is an orderly place and that behavior is determined by what happened in the past. So all behaviors that exist, exist because of the consequences that followed them in the past. We don't believe that behavior is random and we don't look at mentalism when we're looking at behavior. We believe all behavior is determined. So an example of that would be that I were to buy my mom a Christmas present this year because last year when I bought her a Christmas present, she was really happy and really appreciated it and sent me a message um, that said, thank you so much, it means a lot to me and I was reinforced by that. So therefore this year I'm going to buy her a present again, right? So my behavior was determined there by the consequence of buying her a present last year. The next one is empiricism. So this is the idea that we believe that everything must be proved and researched with scientific-based evidence. We use research-based treatments. We don't just make things up as we go. Again, we don't just declare things mentalistically. Like, I think my mom would like a Christmas present because Christmas presents are beautiful and wonderful and they make people happy, right? No, it would be the idea that I did a study conducting some proving something and researching something. So that would be really empiricism. So it's kind of hard to use the Christmas example here, but let's just say that I wanted to know whether or not it is a good idea to use an expressive follow-up when teaching receptive language and whether or not that increased the acquisition of targets. And so I'm gonna conduct a research study, I'm gonna prove this, and then I'm gonna definitively say, Yes, there's a functional correlation between using functional, um, using expressive follow-ups when teaching receptive targets on the acquisition of manding and tax skills, right? So that would just be obviously something totally made up, but that would be the example of an empirical study. Okay, guys, the next idea is replication. And this is another attitude of science and ABA. And what this says is that the results of the study must be replicated in order for them to really be meaningful, right? If something happens once, that's not really enough to prove that it's true. And it's not enough to prove a functional control. So when conducting experiments, we wanna replicate them and get the, the results multiple times. So again, in the previous example, maybe I did my study with one child, but now I'm gonna do it with another child in order to make sure that the results are duplicatable or replicatable. That's replication. The fourth one is experimentation. So this is oftentimes confused between the idea of empiricism and experimentation. A lot of times when you're looking at mock questions, people do confuse these. Experimentation results is really related specifically to conducting an experiment and the idea that we're going to test things. Whereas empiricism is referring to the fact that we're using evidence-based practices. And so when you're looking at the two differences, make sure and if you're looking at experimentation, they're referring to all parts of conducting an experiment. And when they're talking about empiricism, they're referring specifically to using evidence-based practices when teaching. The next attitude of science is parsimony. This essentially means that we're always going to rule out the most simple explanation before looking at things that are more complicated. So for example, if a child starts holding their ear one day, we may wanna rule out the fact that their ear hurts before looking into a behavior plan and assuming it's some sort of new bizarre stimming behavior, right? So it's the idea we're always gonna rule out the most ex ex simple explanation first, this is where they talk about that um, common expression, if you hear hoofbeats, think horses, not zebras. The next one is philosophical doubt. This is the idea that we always doubt the results of the study, we always doubt science, 
we always leave room for error and for more improvement and more growth. We know that ABA is an evolving field, right? And really comparatively to other forms of psychology, it hasn't been around very long. And as a result, it's constantly changing. Well, philosophical doubt is a big part of why, because it's the idea that we're always questioning whether or not what our conclusions are are true, and we're always going to be trying to improve them. That's philosophical doubt. All right, guys, so let's look at some mock questions. I actually have two of them, and I want you to drop your comments below, and then I'll let you know if you're right or wrong. So Manak is a BCBA conducting research. After conducting an experiment, he concluded that when using behavior momentum, there was no greater benefit to using five over three high probability trials. He presented his results at a conference, but acknowledged that there were limitations to the study, states that more research was needed, and that he was open to the results being incorrect. What attitude of science is Manak displaying? A, philosophical doubt, B, parsimony, C, determinism, or D, empiricism. So these are what these kind of questions are going to look like on your exam. They're going to be asking you to apply and pick one out, or maybe which one they violated potentially as well. So put your answer to that one below, and then we'll look at another one. Okay, Catherine is a BCBA. She was called in to work with a child who started roaring like a lion right after watching The Lion King. Mom was concerned that her son thought he was a lion and asked Catherine if she could get a psychiatric evaluation. Catherine told mom that this was a private event and she could not speculate why her son was roaring like a lion, but stated there was likely nothing to worry about since the behavior started right after watching The Lion King that she would take data on the behavior before intervening. Which attitude of science is Catherine displaying? A, philosophical doubt, B, parsimony, C, determinism, and D, empiricism. So again, if you drop your comments in, or their answers in the comments below, I do answer or respond to everyone who answers these questions and let you know if you're right or wrong. And if you get it wrong, we can hash it out in the comments below. So I really do hope you've found this video helpful in understanding the six attitudes of science and what a mock question may look like on your exam if you get one that involves the attitudes of science. I have more resources on my website, hopeeducationservices.com, including my fifth edition TASLIS course I put out with Dr. Katie May. So check that out. There's a lot of things on there to help you study and pass your BCBA exam.